I decided that we need like a nice visual on how the Motec's gonna be wired. So we made this. We actually have two iterations of it for the, the 911SC, a Motec M130. And then the only real note that I had added here is that we're gonna need a pull up resistor on the tachometer to make that work. All the red is all the drive-by wire functions. You can see how many uh, drive-by wire items are actually necessary to be wired in for this dual drive-by wire setup. See, this is my like, cheat sheet on where I'm picking all my IO or my inputs and outputs. We are building a backdate Porsche 911. It is starting on a 1979 SC shell. What typically takes two years, we're gonna try to complete in less than 10 months. Jesus Christ. Um, is it not the same? No, it's gonna be the same thing. He's gonna have to notch right here. See if you're on the right path. So it'd be about five inch spacing. Until a certain point, like yeah. from here. Maybe we do. Once do it think, dives through here, do you then. Think we should do the breakout right on the dive. Five and three quarters. You know the little yellow heat shrink tags? Yeah. And they did it like every like however long. And then so you literally have like a, a tape measure wire. Uh, that's it. Like gonna maybe try to make one before I like came here. But then I was like, no, nah, dude, I gotta be real. Like this is this yeah, is how I really do it. I'm here with Ryan from Rywire along with his partner Ryan Durr from Rywire. So we're at Simo's beautiful shop and we've got this beautiful ITB setup, drive-by wire setup from Kinsler. Today is gonna be the first time he's kind of seen the whole setup, talking with the team and figuring out what is the best way to make this the absolute best wiring harness, uh, you know, for Porsche 911s. Engine looks really, really good. Very happy with the ITB choice. Everything's been addressed and it's all coated properly. Clean slate to be able to work on. You guys have the twin plug, definitely desirable engine. CMO's build um, looks incredible. The wiring harness for the starter and then like the speed sensors and reverse lights and stuff are already all kind of pre-wired for us and it looks really good. Where we're going to start with this is kind of derive a plan how we're gonna have stuff routed. I know that Simo wanted to do a mil-spec connector, which I think is a great idea. He was saying that this location would be a prime spot to have a disconnect. That if you built a wire loom with the ECU that's under the seats. Yep and then you ran the loom through the cab, through a grommeted hole, so it would stay sealed from the environment, and there'd be just a bulkhead, essentially just you know chilling over the gear gearbox and then right through here. So if you were going to remove this engine, you would literally just be able to you know unclip it and pull it right out. This is an excellent idea that you two guys are collaborating on and we can really bring this idea to life. Yeah, I think that was a good, good spot. And I'd like to put the twist underneath it. Yeah. Because there's less room here, so we'll twist it out from underneath. Understood. This engine is running a <clears throat> Motec M130. We have twin plug, dual servos, as well as dual throttle position sensors. So there's kind of two of everything, cramming a lot of IO, inputs and outputs, into one small box. So we got this. Tiny ECU, I mean, it's super light. It has the power to run everything that we need here. Our PDM, literally the same size. We can run these side by side. We could also do some kind of like a stack if we wanted to. If this lays flat under the seats and we can just run the wiring harness kind of this direction, 90, and it'll go and it'll meet at that mil spec. I think it's perfect. We also have the Motec LTC. So this is the Lambda control unit. Just wire this LTC to a CAN bus plug. They actually make everything really easy. You just have to go to town. I'm Ryan Bossery from Rywire and today I am working on a project for the CSF 911. Basically what I have here is some of the raw materials and a little bit of stuff that's kind of already done and designed. What I did was I just made this really funky drawing. I'm really bad at art obviously and that's all I really needed for us to create something as amazing as this is here. The plan is to have, you know, the Motec M130 ECU and then our PDM14. This is the fuse box essentially, and then this is the engine controller. These two components need to get wired into the car with all the sensors, the coils, the injectors, the temperature sensors, the pressure sensors, all that needs to work together. These are the coil pack connectors with the little rubber boots, various sensors, air temp, different pressures, as well as also just these like 
yellow tags that are heat shrinkable tubes that have printing on them. And those turn into these really cool little logo tags that you guys are super familiar with. Some of our connectors and the way that we kind of you know, start the process essentially. Moving along, this is the first section of the engine that we've laid out. We used this really rough measurement that I was talking about earlier, and that turned into this finished product right here, where you could see all the coil pack connectors, you could see the triggers and the ground, cam and crank sensors, all the pressure transducers, the knock sensors, different control solenoids. And this whole section is this section right here. Even though that looks like some chicken scratch, it turns into something that's pretty darn perfect. One thing that we were trying to do to keep it like a really good motorsport feel is to use these auto sport connectors. Literally you buy them in a bag, they got pins and they got a shell in them. This is a red keyway version. The goal was actually order a hundred pin version of this connector. So everything will be able to go through a hundred pin version connector. It'd probably be about, maybe about that big because of delays with production, manufacturing, COVID delays, we can call it. The UK has a back order on that connector of, I wanna say that they said something like seven weeks. It's hard enough to just get this wire, let alone trying to find specialty connectors at a time like this. We gotta build this loom and we want it done in about like a week and a half to two weeks. We actually stock most of this stuff, so we use some of our stock. I didn't order anything new for this build. All the connectors, all the pins, terminals, all this stuff I had in stock. So I didn't have to rely on anybody, but I wasn't able to use my 100 pin connector. We have to actually use two smaller ones. This is a smaller connector and this is a slightly larger. There's gonna be two of these bulk heading through Robbie's uh, engine cover. When having two connectors, when you've strategized for one, you can't just literally have two connectors and loom it and have it just branch side by side if you want it to be a proper job. We're really forced to reconfigure the layout and re-strategize based on the two connectors. There's gonna be a nice section where it's two and then it's gonna convert back to one and then it's gonna go into the ECU plug into two. You're not gonna see any of that, but it'll be all properly done and laid out. We concentrically twist the terminals here and that actually gives a good amount of flexibility. So I can take this connector and I can turn it, orientate it however I need. If it gets pulled on, there's actually gonna be a little bit of stretch there. So the pins aren't gonna get actually pulled on the face where the wire will wanna pull out. That little service loop will be a strain relief for the pin so there's not extra tension on it. The concentric twist gives flexibility, especially when you have the loom on it. It's gonna go any direction and be perfectly comfortable because of the way that it's wound. And I thought it was really important to show all the, all the components that we're using, as well as how the looms are actually being made and, and some of the delays that, that we could face in building something like this so custom and on a tight deadline. July 28th, we're about 100 days away from SEMA. SEMA's built a lot of cars, but never a SEMA one. So I told them the pain starts today. Yes, we have a deadline, but we don't want to cut any corners. Everyone's going to be working extra hard to be able to deliver a final car. We're so proud of it would be the same result if we did have more time and not have to you know debut it at the SEMA show. Roger today, who's brought us the Sparco SPX seats that we were able to get from Sparco USA. So thank you to Alan and Warren, those guys at Sparco for helping us out. He's finished them with the authentic Goyard fabric that we have cut down from the handbags that we purchased. It looks awesome, Roger. You did an amazing job. The thought process, the fabrication, and the way you laid it out before you even started to cut. When they come from the factory or because they're worn out over time, the patterns always change. So what I do is actually get my own pattern. When I lay the material down, it's always flat and it never has a wrinkle. Cause you could take this material off after a year, lay it down flat and the shape will change compared to when I cut it when it was flat. Boring Giles. This is a company we started using for leather. It almost feels like a designer jacket, you know? I wanted the pattern to line up and I wanted the Goyard logos to line up symmetrically across both seats. Cut each piece individually. I would cut the other side of the bag, but I'd use the same pattern to kind of guide me. Mm -hmm. But I had to do each one drawn by hand. So each one was actually drawn by hand because I wanted them to line up with the same logo. Downwards, horizontally, uh, vertically, horizontally, and, and diagonally. So even if you look at it across this way, it line, I wanted it to line up this way too. It's the ultimate proof that OCD is an asset. Yeah. yeah. 
what makes the Goyard print so special, and it is done by hand. It takes even that much more for the upholstery person, Roger, to be able to go and exactly line it up. The fact that you were able to then replicate one perfect seat into two perfect, two perfect seats, seat, yeah. I think is amazing. Ghost embossed of the Porsche crest on the headrest as well. It really gives that OE level touch with the Porsche crest, which is an option that you have to actually pay for when you buy a Porsche. I can't wait to drive the car sitting on these seats and you know, it's just another uh, part of the car that's gonna add a level of sensation. I wanted to center the Goyard and we also did redid the strap. This strap is amazing. I, I mean, also the centered the Goyard on the top of the strap, so you look at it like. Wow. Uh, I wanted everything to be straight, you know, so. Uh, these are just the two seats, but Roger pretty much took control of the entire interior of the vehicle. So Rogelio's upholstery is going to be showcasing their absolute best work on this car for the whole world to see. The full interior with all the fiberglass panels that have to be done, put a little bit of material on our new roll bar, which you're going to see in a little bit. Just got done by uh, MB powder coating. We're really excited to see how the whole thing starts to come together once we start uh, assembling the interior of the vehicle. Some of the absolute best upholstery that you can get, not just in Southern California, but anywhere in the country, delivered to an expectation level that I even think exists. Now we're going to dive back into uh, the engine harness and the fully built engine with Rywire and SV Auto. My whole thought process with designing a system like this is to kind of like break down every single aspect and make it the best that it possibly could. You know, a race Lamborghini Huracan to a, to a Honda Civic, they all need upgrades. There's no factory systems that are like perfect right out of the box. So we want the Motec M1 to be able to do everything that the Motec can do to have the best driving experience possible and to control everything that we need. These are high discharge ignition coils. They are gonna have the spark energy that we need. They are an upgrade from stock by far, and it's exactly what the Motec M1 is gonna want. ID 1050X injectors, they're not sized too big, they're not sized too small. The atomization in the injectors makes the spray pattern really, really good, making your tuner really happy because they can do whatever they want now and they'll literally notice a difference. The injector is gonna have a lot more control, idle at lower RPMs, you're gonna be able to do a lot of things that you can't do with a factory injector. The most important upgrade that we did in this application is the drive-by-wire throttle one. Kinsler drive-by-wire throttles, they have two sensors in each TPS. The ends of the shaft gives you the technology to be able to see exactly what's going on on one side of the engine as well as the other. Independent servo control on both sides. They're the highest end servos you can get. Very expensive, work very, very well, and there's a reason why they use these on like really high-end motorsport applications. This single-handedly is gonna be the biggest upgrade in the entire system. This factory crank trigger is actually really nice, but this cam sensor is a huge upgrade. So that's from Cluet, and they do a Hall Effect sensor there. Basically, you're just gonna see a lot cleaner cam signal, and you're gonna be able to tune the engine, calibrate the engine a lot easier. We added a head temperature sensor. There's a, some expansion here too. So we're gonna add some speed sensors and temperature sensors, and these can be expanded onto later. Because we have factory gauge cluster, right? We have some of these factory sensors in here. With a MoTeC, you're, you wanna see 100% exactly where your pressure's at, exactly where your temperature's at, to be able to scale and calibrate the engine. So we fit all these stainless steel sensors in here. Manifold for barometric, for fuel pressure, for oil pressure. All these things are 100% critical because that's gonna basically give you the proper tune-up on the engine. If you don't have those, you're, you're pretty much guessing and there's no fail-safe strategies that can be implemented. So anybody who's looking at doing a resto mod or building a Porsche engine wants to know why we went to this level and you pretty much just laid it out on how all of these upgrades and all of these selections of choices that we use is just gonna elevate the driving experience to make that perfect Porsche, you know? Yeah. This is really like the second big high-profile Porsche engine that you've done. The first one was on AEM, correct? Mm -hmm. This one being on MoTeC, and I know for you coming out with these new packages for Porsche, yeah. this is kind of the standard that you want to be able to convey to the market. Ryan is going to be coming out with these here pretty soon. What you see is what you get. You can watch this video, you can understand better why he's doing this selection it really comes down to that classic saying, you get what you pay for. If you want the best option, Ryan's gonna be able to be the one who can provide that to you. Ryan, thank you for going through all those details. I know yeah. I learned quite a bit. Asimo, you've been yeah. in this industry for a long time, working with Ryan. I know even for a guy your experience, you're still learning some things from yeah. all of us. So that's great, Ryan, that you've yeah. been able to teach not just myself, yeah. but Simo and everybody watching how sophisticated it can get and where the future is going when it comes to drive-by-wire, standalone engine management for the Porsche engine. In my 30 years of doing this, this is the nicest harness fabrication and installation I've ever seen. Thank you. Appreciate so, that. Wow. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So
thank you for watching our documentary on the CSF 9-11. We are. Wow. Flirty, dirty inside, but uh, yeah. that's part of the show and Billy's painted. Simo and John Sabal and I, we did a little Zoom session, figured out the wheels as well as the colors. We got two and a half months to finish the car and here it is. I mean, it looks awesome.